Greetings ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs, I am Zach and welcome to Real Topics, where I talk about relevant popular movie topics of the week. So, without further ado, let's dive on in. Coming up first is Christopher Nolan's new project will reportedly be one of the most expensive films of all time with a budget of $225 million. Now, Warner Brothers is going to want to do whatever they can to keep Christopher Nolan exclusively making films for them, so I imagine that they will be fine with whatever amount of money he needs to spend on any of his films, because going to see a Christopher Nolan film, it's kind of like an event, like you just, you go to see it. And in having Christopher Nolan direct one of your films, you're essentially printing at least $500 million for yourself. You see, Christopher Nolan is on this whole new level, along with Quentin Tarantino, where any movie that they put out people will just flock to the theaters no matter what. It'll, it'll make a ton of money, it'll be a great success, and it's, uh, it's a good level to be on because he can do whatever project he wants. No matter how crazy it is, he can do it. And I respect the man because I've enjoyed all of his films, from Dunkirk to even Interstellar, the Batman trilogy, you name it. Just great movies that he makes, great original stories usually, and it's good for the film industry. As for the project itself, it's going to come out in July of 2020, and it's titled Tenet. It's described as an action epic evolving from the world of international espionage. So that could be interesting. I typically don't like spy movies, but it's Christopher Nolan, so I'll give it a shot. For the next topic, we will be moving into the universe of Star Wars. Daisy Ridley in a recent interview said that she won't be in either upcoming Star Wars trilogy, Benioff and Weiss, or Ryan Johnson's respective trilogies, and possibly never again in Star Wars at all. She was very cryptic about that. And... Honestly, like, a lot of people are surprised about this, but I'm not really too surprised. I mean, we, I think we know that one of the trilogies is going to be The Old Republic, and there's just no way that Rey would be in that. And while we don't know the topic matter of Ryan Johnson's trilogy, I never really assumed that we'd see Rey in it anyway. I think that hopefully they leave her character in a good place uh, with the rise of Skywalker, and maybe she'll pick it back up in 20 years or so, but... I always felt like it would be good to kind of leave this trilogy where it was and not have to continuously bring back characters because you, we need more good characters. We didn't get that many from this trilogy and we can't just keep bringing back the same ones. That's why I'm so on board for an Old Republic trilogy because we can get new characters from a new time period that we've never explored on screen before. And so, yes, I'm not surprised that Daisy Ridley won't be in these trilogies. As for the possibility of her never being in Star Wars again, I highly doubt that you know i think that it's very feasible that in her contract there's a clause that states if we want to have you in another star wars movie um you're gonna have to do that considering that we made your career so i'm sure we'll see her again in star wars someday but just not for a while for the next topic we move into the sphere of television brian cranston and aaron paul both posted the same picture at the same time on june 25th 2019 of two mules with the caption soon so what does this mean well their obvious connection is that they both starred in breaking bad my favorite television series of all time and i can't decide whether or not this is exciting or whether they're trolling us but there was a rumor or i think confirmation of a breaking bad movie happening but for some reason i just can't 100 percent believe it because the show ended so perfectly um, I'm not going to spoil anything about the show because my girlfriend will watch this and she's, we're currently watching it together. I don't want her to find out the ending, but, um, I'm excited if there's a Breaking Bad movie. You know, I trust Vince Gilligan. I think he knows what he's doing with this, this universe, this film universe or television universe or whatever and whatnot. And I'm excited, I'm cautiously optimistic, kind of the same way I approached Better Call Saul when that was coming out, but they've done a phenomenal job with that show. So we will have to wait and see, but this is definitely something to watch. Maybe we'll get a trailer soon if it's an actual thing. And if it's not, maybe we'll get the punchline of the joke that they're playing on us soon, and we can all just go home and cry. The Avengers Endgame re-release post credit scene has been revealed to be, allegedly, Hulk saving some kids, a deleted scene. Not even a, a teaser scene to just set up the future of the MCU. No, it's just a deleted scene. And I have to say, I'm not really happy that they're doing this. They're blatantly just trying to make more money. They're blatantly just trying to beat Avatar's record. And I just don't see the point of going to see this movie. You're just going to watch some insignificant deleted scene that's not even technically canon. And 
they're kind of advertising it as like six new minutes of footage, but I know that some of the six minutes is just the director giving an intro to the movie, so that's not anything relevant to the plot. It's not like a re-edit, it's not a director's cut, it's literally just here to make money so that it can hopefully pass Avatar. That's all it is, it's just for making money. Kevin Feige even said as much, so I probably won't be going to see this. It's good for probably the seven people on the planet who haven't seen this movie yet. But as far as the rest of us, it's not really necessary to see it unless you just love the movie and you want to go check it out. Nothing wrong with that. But yeah, don't expect anything too groundbreaking. I almost forgot. If you're lucky enough, you'll get a poster for seeing this movie again. And that obviously makes it worth it. And lastly, the Charlie's Angels trailer debuted this week. It's a remake of a remake. And it got pretty less than lukewarm reception. I watched the trailer, I'm not a huge Charlie's Angels fan, but it just really looked like a bland action movie, nothing spectacular about it. I mean, Patrick Stewart's in it, I like him. But uh, check it out for yourself. There's no real defining qualities about it. Um, definitely doesn't feel as campy as the other ones, and I thought that was the point, but I don't know. It just I remember reading a comment on Reddit that said, like, this movie's destined for the $5 bin at Walmart. And I think that is basically a perfect way to sum it up. I just don't see anything special about this movie. If I'm wrong, I will eat my shoe and um, have to walk around with just one shoe on, I guess. So on that note, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope you're having a good day wherever you're at. And I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe if you want. It's totally up to you. And I will see you on the next one, folks. Keep watching movies. Keep enjoying them. Bye!